All right, everybody. Today we are going to be looking at and building the USS Enterprise 1701. So this is a kit that's been out for a while. It's getting re-released for 2020. And let's look at this new edition. Starting off with the box art, we get some really nice pictures. Uh, the box art is an actual built and painted model. Um, always like to see that, an actual model on it. Um, the unified box art they've been doing for a while with the captain in the corner. And of course they've been putting a quote from that captain on all the boxes. And of course for the Wrath of Khan edition of the model, the quote they put is just Khan, Captain James Kirk. So lots of good pictures there. Comes with the dome base, comes with decals. We're going to look at that in a moment. 40 parts. Of course, it talks about a full color paint and decal guide. And that is on the inside of the box. All right, so here is our paint guide. Only a few colors are really used for this. Uh, most of the heavy lifting you're going to do with decals. So you do some light gray, a little bit of black, a little duck egg blue, rust and clear blue. We have kind of the decal placement all along the sides of the box. So let's talk about the decals. On the previous releases for this kit, you've had one option. You've been able to build it as the 1701 as seen in the motion picture. With this edition, you actually get to decal up your model in three different ways. So it has the green decals for the motion picture in Wrath of Khan. It has the blue decals for the 1701A and it has battle damaged decals uh, so that you can make it the way it was towards the end of the Wrath of Khan or as it was in the search for Spock. So you get kind of those three different choices and you get marking decals uh, for the 1701 and the 1701A. So lots of good choices there. All right, here is the actual plastic, uh, about 40 parts to make up the ship. All right, and we have some clear parts for the warp nacelle grills, for the impulse crystal, for the deflector dish, for the impulse engines, uh, for the arboretum, and looks like the torpedo bay. Looks like we have four pieces for the engineering hull. It looks good. I don't see any flash on it. I don't see any warped parts. I don't see any parts where the plastic didn't reach all the way. Of course, we have the dome base. We have the nacelles, the pylons, the saucer. Everything looks good here. Of course, when you get to a kit that's been released a couple times, you start to worry uh, that you're going to start seeing the mold breaking down or seeing a flashing, but everything looks uh, as crisp as it did on the previous releases. Uh, so I have the parts painted as much as they're going to be painted for this kit. Um, not too much really. Um, it's kind of nice on this kit. There's a handful of parts that you can paint on their own on the sprue. Um, so you don't have to worry about masking those parts off. Um, once it's assembled, you get some real kind of crisp definition kind of doing them as separate parts. Now, one thing that you will have to paint on this are the windows. There's a few windows represented by decals around the bridge and the outside of the saucer. All the other windows are going to be up to you. So what I'd like to do is I actually like to take a little pin vise and make the windows just a little bit deeper. Uh, once I make them a little bit deeper, they actually hold a wash. So I paint it with acrylic. I do acrylic for the white base coat. Make the holes a little bit deeper and a little bit more defined. And then I use a black enamel wash. And then you could just clean them around the outside of those uh, windows with a little enamel thinner without affecting your acrylic. And that, that gets you some real sharp nice windows. You'll have to do the windows on the neck and the windows on the engineering hull. 
Once again, you know, the, doing this as a separate part, the engineering hole is going to come up right against this bottom part and make a nice crisp line. So you only really have to mask that straight line across the top. Now this is a snap fit kit, so these parts should snap together. Um, it really shouldn't need much glue, but let's put some parts together and see how the fit is. We're just going to look at a little bit of the assembly here. So the pylons snap together. And then these slots actually go down to the bottom and you press it up against the side. So you do that kind of on both halves and then both halves of the engineering hole snap together. Once you have those two sides snapped together, the top is going to snap on across the top and it's got a little lip here that's going to catch onto the bottom if you press it pretty firmly. Finally, the bottom is going to snap on. And this deflector housing will snap on the front to keep everything nice and round. And then finally, we're going to squeeze the deflector dish right into the front of the model. So it does take a little bit of work just to get everything snapped in place. Everything does close up pretty tightly. But overall, pretty nice fit. Once again, I really like to get to paint some of these parts separately so that you can get that torpedo bay painted by itself without masking. And on the nacelles, you get some real crisp definition by being able to paint that part separately, this part separately, and kind of doing that black intake valve um, separately from all the parts around it. Now so. this release of the USS Enterprise has a companion product. It has a separate Aztec decal sheet set. It comes with four different sheets of Aztecs, and this companion piece will have the Aztecs for the Enterprise and the Reliant. It also has some additional logos that you can use on bases and additional letters and numbering. So we're going to be using the Enterprise Aztec decals on this build. All right, we have put all the Aztec wallpapers on the ship. We'll show you some close-ups of how they look, but overall they went on well, no big problems. I think my favorite part of the Aztec decals are the nacelles. I think the nacelles work out very well. The decals fit very well without any wrinkles or gaps. And I think they just look fantastic. So there's the outside. Here's the inside of the nacelle. All right, and this is the actual engineering hole. With the Aztec decals, we've put some Microsol on there so that um, they really do wrap around. Here is our saucer all the way around. And even though I just spent the past day and a half decaling, now it's time for all the kit decals. So probably another day and a half to get all these on, and then we'll have the completed ship to show you. Well, all the marking decals are on the ship, and there, there are a lot of them. But it's the Enterprise refit. There's not much you can leave off. Anything you leave off uh, on this ship, you would be called out on. So they really have to include everything. They have to include the phaser bumps, the RCS thrusters, uh, the saucer windows, all the lifeboat hatches. Now, the advice I would have for anybody building this kit, I've got a, a few hints after having built it. The first advice I have is for the phaser bumps, before you paint this, sand off those bumps if you're going to use the decals. Uh, those bumps just really keep that decal from laying nice and flat. Uh, same thing with these RCS thrusters right on the edge. 
um, having that little bump sticking out really stops that from laying down properly. Those were really the only decals that really fought me were the phaser bumps and those RCS thrusters. The other advice I'd have is when you're working on this deflector housing decal and this one behind it, this one and this one, do those before you snap the neck onto this. This decal is long enough that these two meet in the middle underneath that. So it lays down nice and flat before you put the neck on. If you put the neck on first, like I did, you're going to have to cut it to try and get it to match in there properly. But we've got it completely decaled now. Now it's just time to do the final assembly and it being a snap fit. Uh, it's going to be really easy just to snap all of these parts together. All right, we'll try and get some good close-ups here so you can kind of see how she looks. As you can see, we've got the RCS thrusters in detail there, all the lifeboat hatches. Uh, so these little gray ones here, those were not done as part of the Aztecs. Those are all separate decals you have to put on afterwards. So clearly you can see the ship with the Aztec decal set just has an incredible amount of detail. Uh, very little paint is actually on this one. Um, and it, it looks great. Um, but I also have an older version of the kit that I did a few years ago. And the older edition of the kit before the manufacturer switched decal makers, um, really had decals that would shred and crack and fall apart. So pretty much as I worked on it, on this older one, I gave up on doing the Aztec decals. Um, so he, this is actually a fair representation of what you can do with the kit if you don't buy the Aztecs. So on this one, um, I accented the grid lines to give it a little bit of detail, uh, but it can still look really good. Uh, the kit will actually still come with the thruster decals, the phaser decals, the bridge and the dome decals, the strong back decals, and, and more than I actually have on this old kit. Uh, but you can still make a good looking model even if you don't do the Aztecs. Uh, so here you go. This is an un aztec version of the 1-1000th USS Enterprise. Um, so don't feel that you need to get the Aztec set to really have a great looking model. Um, you can you can do it either way. And I've already seen lots of comments about people saying they're going to do paint masks and paint their own Aztecs. And, and that's great. Do it kind of however you like to do the kit. Uh, but for me, I have vastly enjoyed doing the Aztec decals. Another big point about this kit is 1,000 scale is a scale you can build your fleet in. So right here you can see the NX-01, the original TOS, the Enterprise Refit, uh, the Excelsior, and the Reliant are all made in 1,000 scale. And they look good together. Um, in addition to these, which are just some of the ones I have handy, uh, round 2 slash Polar Lights has released several other Star Trek kits in this scale. Uh, most recently they did the Bird of Prey 
and the Grissom from Star Trek III that will be in the same scale as all of these. Uh, the Enterprise B is in this scale. Uh, the Defiant from Deep Space Nine is in this scale. Now the crazy part is, even after doing all those wallpaper decals, even after doing all the marking decals, we are still not done because now it will be time for battle damage. Here's all the battle damage decals provided. Um, so we're gonna get this done up because it is the Wrath of Khan edition. We'll put some Wrath of Khan damage on it. I wanna take just one second to talk about spare decals. Because as I started to do the battle damage, uh, the directions only really call out a few pieces here. This is the battle damage for Khan's initial attack. And these are the only ones really called out on the instructions for where they go on the ship. So those are, to actually make it screen accurate for Khan's attack, everything else here is extra. So you can go through the movie, find later attacks, look at Star Trek 3, look for more damage, and do it up however you want, but all of that is extra. Also, all of this is extra on the kit as well, uh, because they gave you the version to do the A or the original refit. So you get more hatches for ports, a couple more names, names on the nacelles, uh, you get another full staff strong back, and deflector housings. And if you're doing the typical ships, the Aztec decals, once again, have a ton of custom letters and numbers. So if you do end up picking up this kit and, and the Aztec decals, you're gonna have a lot of decals left over for future projects. I, I think it's a wonderful inclusion to give us so much extra so you can do whichever version you want and give you a ton of extra battle damage to do your ship up however you want or use on future projects. Well, the battle damage looks good. So you can see it's not just black charring and black kind of smears. They do show some of the ship's structure uh, kind of beyond the damage point, so you can kind of get an idea of looking in towards the ship. And here we have the damage to the engineering hull and the torpedo bay. Looks great. A little bit of structure behind it, just like on the other one. I think it's a great way to update this kit. All right, there's no real way to avoid talking about price on this uh, because it's a kit that a few years ago you'd be able to buy in a hobby store for about $30 with the Aztec decals included. And now it's about $30 and the Aztec decals are sold separately for another $20. And that $20 for the decals gets you the Enterprise and the Reliant. So really this is about $10 more. Uh, the Reliant was always sold with the kit and the decals separately, and the prices on those don't really change. It's still going to be about $40 or so for both of those, um, for the model and the Aztec decals. Um, and this is simply the way it is. The cost of models are going up. And I will say I, I appreciate that when round two has to do a price increase, at least you get something more for it. So you're paying $10 more, but you're getting the battle damage decals and plenty of spares to use on other kits. Uh, you are getting the chance to do it as the motion picture version, the Wrath of Khan version, or the Enterprise A from Star Trek V and Star Trek VI. The previous release you could only build as the motion picture version. So, you know, at least a big thank you to them for giving us a little bit more. Now, whether those upgrades and additional decals are worth the extra $10, um, that's really a choice you guys will have to make. But this is the Enterprise. It is the most popular version of the Enterprise. It is represented the way it is in the most popular Star Trek movie. So I, I think it's still a good buy. And I think 
the difference between what you get for that extra $10, I, I think that's worth it too, especially if you're going to do the Reliant and the Enterprise, uh, because I think, I think there's a world of difference between the Aztec version and the non-Aztec version. I, I think the non-Aztec still looks good, and I think it's still a fair representation of the Enterprise. Um, but the Aztec version just has so much more detail, I think it's worth the $10. Uh, if this wasn't the Enterprise, the most classic ship and in its best depiction, I don't know that I'd go out and spend $40 on it, but Kirk's ship from the movies, absolutely. Thank you guys for following our build. And whether you're going to build the ship as it is in the kit without any Aztec decals, or if you're planning on getting the, all the Aztec decals and doing it up the way we've done it here in the build, we hope these videos are useful for you. We hope they give you a fair idea of what's in the kit. We hope they give you a fair idea of what the models will look like when they're built, in this case, mostly out of the box. Um, and hopefully give you a good idea of what you guys can do on your projects. Hopefully you guys um, see some things that you like. Hopefully you guys get some ideas of things you're going to do differently in your builds to make them better than our straight up out of the box builds. And we appreciate you guys following the channel. We appreciate you liking our videos. We hope they're helpful and help you guys. Thank you guys very, very much. Hopefully in the next few weeks we'll be working on the Reliant. Um, and possibly doing a diorama between these two. And if you guys have any ideas for any previous versions of ships you'd like to see on our channel, put it in the comments below. Thank you guys very, very much for following us. We'll be back soon.